Hello, everyone. Welcome back to How Come. This episode is going to be a two-parter. Uh, two weeks ago, I recorded with comedian Chris Crespo and writer Spencer Williams, and we talked about sex and disability. And then two nights ago, I was introduced via email uh, by one of the editors of Cosmopolitan to Hannah Sawyer. Uh, Hannah is a journalist and creative writer, and one of her most recent pieces was an article in Cosmopolitan on disability and sex. Uh, she's also the creator of the This Body is Worthy project, which aims to celebrate bodies outside of a mainstream beauty ideal. Uh, so we are going to talk to Hannah, we're going to talk to Chris, and we're going to talk to Spencer, and you're going to get to hear all of it. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be just me and Hannah, and it's going to be me, Spencer, and Chris after that. All right, enjoy! How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna jizz. Hey, Remy. Hi, Hannah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited that I could get you on this episode like so last minute. It is literally coming out in a day. Wow, yeah, this is really exciting. <laughs> I know, and I literally, so, like, you know about this podcast, it's because I couldn't come, and every episode I told you, we ask people what their first time coming experience was. Yes. Yours is the first paragraph of your article in Cosmopolitan on disability and sex. It is. It literally starts with, this is my first time with Luke Thighwalker, your vibrator? Luke Thighwalker, <laughs> hell Yeah. <laughs> Um, when did you purchase Luke? I know you were a sophomore in high school when... No, I was a sophomore in college. I mean, sorry, in college, yeah. No, you're fine. Um, yeah, so I got him that year after I had, um, multiple friends tell me that I needed to find a way for me to be able to do that. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I was, like, very hesitant and I was like, no... Like, that would be awkward. I would have to ask my helpers to, like, get me positioned in bed. What? Because you have spinal muscular atrophy, which means that you Correct. need help doing everything? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Um, I have someone with me 24-7, pretty much. Um, so, I mean, I have some independence, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of physical things I need help with. And is this, like... Are they, it's one person or two people that are normally with you? One person. And do you, mm -hmm. do you feel like close with them? Like, oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The you majority have to. of my helpers, I end up becoming really good friends with. I would think so. I it's also like a, have yeah. hired friends uh, before. So yeah. And you've had somebody your entire life? Um, yeah. I mean, so I moved away from home my, you know, for college, mm -hmm. uh, my freshman year of college, I moved uh, to go to undergrad. And so prior to that, when I was living at home, um, I had my parents. And then when I was uh, like at school, I would have a one on one helper with me through the school. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I would have, um, like, probably like a couple nights a week or so, I would have um, a helper come in uh, to help as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, you get really close, but is it kind of like, you're like, I don't want to ask this person for this thing. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like it's really just dependent on how comfortable I feel with that person. Yeah. So, um, I certainly like don't ask all of my helpers. Um, and I definitely don't like, if I'm hiring a new one, it's not like something I spring upon them right away either. Yeah. I mean, I just know that like I started coming this year and it's been, I've wanted to do it nonstop. Like, mm -hmm. did you want to do it nonstop after your first experience? And, like, how did you deal with that with another person having to be the buffer? Um, I mean, yeah, I think, I think for me, you know, and I talk about this in my article, and but I think this is true for anybody, like, especially women. I think that, 
Um, being able to do that is such a liberating experience because it gives us an agency over our bodies that we're told we're not meant to have. Totally. And um, so I think that for me, I like that's what I was addicted to. You know, I was, I mean, I still am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, like, it was so life changing in that way. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like actually when I first started doing it, I, it took me a lot longer to and position so it. I would have to plan out, okay, this day of the week, I have this helper. They're my best friend. They're really chill. Like they were one of the ones to encourage me to start doing this. Yeah. Um, so, like, I can take time out of my night routine to do this, you know. And then over time, I've gotten to be a lot quicker about it. So that makes it easier <laughs> Better for, me for to everyone. Do it often. <laughs> yeah. Um, I liked in your article how you said a lot of people have a misconception of people with disabilities that they're childlike and, or sexless. Mm-hmm. Because um, I think... Like that, that is something that it's like, oh, if you have to be cared for, that makes you, that, that makes you a more childish role when really Mm -hmm. you still have the same, if not more heightened sexual desire because you haven't been able to get it out as much. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's an interesting thing because I think And again, I think, um, you know, like I'm speaking solely of my experience and Mm -hmm. definitely more towards the female perspective. But I think often uh, women with disabilities are seen as very asexual or childlike. Um, Like I've been asked many times, oh, well, can you have sex? How do you have sex? Mm -hmm. Which is just like, you know, one, like, why are you asking anybody that? Right. Um, And two, it's, like, insulting. But on the other hand, women with disabilities, I think, are also in a more vulnerable position. Yeah, I Um, thought that was a really interesting point as well. Yeah, so I think that, I mean, physically, right, like, we're not, like, I am not as able to defend myself as an able-bodied woman yeah. And so I think it's this weird paradox of being viewed as childlike and asexual, but then also being so easy vulnerable prey for sexual predators. Yeah. Just as like I was reading, because you were saying, I think it was either you or one of the women that you interviewed for the article uh, was saying that she uses like a BDSM harness to be hoisted mm-hmm. up. And then once you're in that position, like, someone could do anything to you. They could leave you there for days. Like you're really at the mercy and have to trust the person that you're with at the moment. Yeah, you do. And I think, I mean, I think that that is another huge factor that goes into it. I know um, one time I was at this workshop at this conference where people with spinal muscular atrophy and the workshop was on sex and dating And the woman who was presenting, who also had SMA, I I asked her a question about, like, one-night stands and safety Mm -hmm. and all of that fun stuff. And she was like, well, if you're choosing to have a one-night stand, then you are taking just as much risk as an able-bodied woman. But, like, that's bullshit, you know? Because, like, anybody that cannot physically defend themselves... They're at way more risk, obviously. And I mean, the thing is, like, we brought up the fact that I rely on my personal care assistant to take care of me. So then if I was being, um, or if I was um, sexually involved with someone, I would then be relying on them to, you know, move me or Mm -hmm. clean up after me or any of those things. So, yeah, I think that the risk is much higher and therefore the trust needs to be much higher. Yeah, like so, think, even like I girls have to pee after sex every time or like you're uh-huh. at risk for a fucking UTI. Like you need help with that shit. And uh-huh. if the person's not willing to do it for you, you're you're kind of you've put yourself at risk. For sure. Um and yeah, I mean it's hard enough for 
for able-bodied women to fight off any kind of attacker. But if you can, you know, get some mace, do something, you can run away. Like for, right. you know, somebody in a chair, like that's – or say, like you can never go be in somebody's walk-up apartment and escape. Like it's just right. not going to happen. Not like, I mean, then, you know, you're like, okay, so – we can go to my apartment, but that... Now you're in my apartment and you issues. can rob me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what happens when you do have a date? Do you usually have your assistant stay in the apartment or someone, like, nearby? Um. So I've never brought someone back to my apartment. Um, just safety. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I've never, like, felt, like, reviving that much. Yeah. Um, but other dates I've been on, yeah, I usually just have my helpers sit somewhere nearish where they can see me, but they're not like involved. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I know people that, you know, like need more help than I would. So like if they need someone to feed them, like then they have to have their helper with them. They're feeding them, um, which, you know, that again like takes on a whole other dynamic I think that's difficult to navigate yeah I mean so my friend Chris is in the other half of this episode Mm -hmm. and uh after we were recording he was saying that part of um having disability is really just how your partner feels when other people look at you in public um Mm -hmm. and he was like like I've gotten over it but it's how they react to it. And sometimes they'll be so upset because we're now being judged as a pair. Um, and I feel like, you know, that could happen with any disability that can happen with even like a, you know, a, a birthmark on someone's face, like, oh, for sure. you know, anything that makes somebody uncomfortable. But, but I thought it was really interesting that he like, he's like, I don't care, but I care if it makes my partner upset. Or if they mm-hmm. they seem visibly upset because they don't want to be judged, then that's a different thing entirely. Yeah, um, yeah, I can I can see where that would be an issue for sure. I do think, um, I do think that there are different difficulties facing um, each gender Mm -hmm. of people with disabilities in the dating world and I think one of them for one of them I would presume for men would be that you know in our society men are supposed to be the more dominant sex um supposed to be able to do more things yeah which you know is harmful for everyone sure um and I think if you have a disability and you're male, it might be more difficult. Well, it would be more difficult, um, to come across as dominant. And so I think relying on someone to physically lift you or to physically help you is going to present different challenges. Yeah. Um, but I don't know again, like that, but then it's the babying thing with you as well. Yeah. No, because then it's like if you're getting lifted, then you're like, oh, now I feel like a child and like I want to be like a sexual object sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think also there's um, there's like the question of, again, like if someone needs to be lifted a certain way. Mm hmm. You know, like, I have to train my helpers how to take care of me. Right. So then a sexual partner, you, you know, have to have like, way you more would communication. have to train them as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, communicating in bed is already hard enough. And you have For to get sure. over that extra hump. Um, yeah. But, I mean, at the, I mean, you know, I guess, like, a silver lining of that could be that, like, disability forces you to communicate a hundred percent which should be happening anyway yeah and you have to add consent too yeah it makes it a lot more clear yeah i i would say um it can make it more clear i also think 
like we said earlier, though, I think that it would be a lot easier to take advantage oh, 100%. of yeah. consent, especially and not just not just in a physical sense. But um, I think that I don't know, I view like sex and people with disabilities, this topic, I see it as sort of um, it can be a vicious cycle. Yeah. Where if someone with a physical dis or someone with any disability is raised thinking, okay, I'm not attractive, I, um, you know, am looked upon as asexual, I'm looked upon as childlike, then they're going to develop this complex, right? Mm-hmm. Where they feel like, um, you know, they're not good enough for anybody, and then that is going to lead them to probably allow themselves to get into situations where someone could take advantage of them easier. Just to be validated. Because they know that they're, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Uh, definitely. And I mean, in no way am I saying like, oh, it's uh, the person with a disability's fault. Like, absolutely No, not, not. at all. Um, but I think that, and that's, like, that's really what, um, masturbating like did for me right because then I was like okay well actually I'm in control and, I control and my body is my own body and yeah. I don't actually need to put myself in any situations um, where I might be taken advantage of just yeah. so that I can feel this definitely and you never have to worry about getting pregnant like they don't tell That's us. Very that. true. They never. No tell, one ever talks about. No that. one talks about it. Like, oh wait, you can come and not have a baby your entire mm-hmm. life. How wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, are there? Do you ever do like? What do you ever do? Dating sites, uh, to date other disabled people, or would you rather date someone able-bodied, or does it not matter? Um. I don't think it really matters to me. I mean, I don't know. I think, like, dating someone disabled would bring other challenges. Um, But, you know, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm a very picky person, though. Yeah. When it comes to, like, who I would want to date. But I... I don't really think that has anything to do with like their physical nature or physical appearance or physical abilities. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really see that as a qualifier Yeah, I or like, non-qualifier. Totally. Um, were your parents fairly open about like sex and sexuality when you were growing up or was that just a not um, talked about topic? I would say it was more off topic I mean, my parents are very, like, uh, they've always been, like, very fierce advocates for me, Mm -hmm. which I think put in my mind uh, the notion that, like, I deserve to be respected and deserve the care that I need. Um, But, no, I mean, I think that... I think that in my, when I was a child, when I was younger, and I think probably this is true for um, a large majority of families Mm -hmm. with kids with disabilities, sex is sex and dating. Like that's not talked about because it's not talked about in our society. So we have no way, we have no way of knowing how to talk about it. Right, you know, right, right. and so I don't know. I mean, that we sort of like, um, you know, like being in the LGBTQ community. Although I feel like that's getting better, there are it's less normalized in our society, and so we have fewer ways to talk about it than we do of um, heteronormative. Yeah, I mean, even sex. even heteronormative parents. I don't think have a script yet for teaching their children about sex. Like it just oh, seems yeah. like, so true. yeah, it just seems like a thing that people really aren't comfy yet. But I think, I think that'll be the next frontier. Was college like you're, you're graduated now, right? Yep. Oh, I'm in grad school, but yeah. Okay. So 
how have you found the college dating experience? Because I've been out a few years now and it wasn't great when I was there. Uh, and now with all of, I mean, I, rape culture has always existed. Um, frats have always existed. But now it's just, I think, brought a little more into the light. Like, uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you experienced like similar shit on campus or do you think things are looking up? I don't know. I would say... Uh, have I been sexually harassed? Yes. Um, unfortunately, has probably the majority of women in America been sexually harassed? Yeah. Yes. Are we often not believed? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as how that relates or how that ties into a college campus, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I yeah. guess I would have to think about that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. I just remember frats being like, oh, like there were certain frats that like you would know that there was going to be roofies in the punch. That was like part oh, of it. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, frats are... They and have sororities are disaster too. Like it's not just the frats. I know sororities mm-hmm. that did crazy hazing. Um, but yeah, I always, I just felt like college was such like a, like a weird uh, mob mindset yeah, it is. And I think especially when you get a bunch of young people that are living on their own for the first time, um, some dangerous stuff can happen. Yeah, but this has been so great. I'm so happy I was able to get you on. Um, are there any other points that you want to leave for anybody out there who's maybe struggling with loving themselves um, or coming in general? I mean, I don't know. I just think that truly, I think that masturbating is one of like the biggest ways that you can like take agency over your body. Mm -hmm. And I think it is such a powerful thing. I think it's more powerful than uh, people want women to believe um, totally you know because then we realize oh we actually don't need to be like oppressed by this culture and we can work against it and, and we can so, still choose yeah, to be I with men afterwards think. it's still cool but we also would like to masturbate exactly yeah Precisely. yeah um okay great hannah sawyer where can everyone find you on the internet and where can they find your writing my Twitter and Instagram handle is at Sawyer, not Sawyer, S-O-Y-E-R-N-O-T-S-A-W-Y-E-R. Nice. Um, and then my, I have a, a project that I started called This Body is Worthy, and we work to celebrate bodies that are outside of stereotypical mainstream beauty ideals. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that website can be found at thisbodyisworthy.com. And we're always looking for more submissions and more people to partner with and collab with. So um, please look at it. Feel free to send in your photos or writing. And yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I just have to ask this at the end of every sexual encounter to be a courteous host. Hannah Sawyer, did you finish? Yes, thank you so much, Remy. Of course. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Oh, that was awesome. Okay, now I am sitting here with Chris Crespo. He is a New York City stand-up comedian and host and creator of the show Hand Jobs on YouTube. Um, he's amazing. Chris Crespo, say hello. Hi, Remy. Say hi, fans. Hi, fans. Okay. Um, and we will also be joined by Spencer Williams. He is a freelance writer currently contributing to Vice.com and focusing on sex and disability. Okay, we're going to call Spencer Williams. Hello. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here via phone, Spencer. Um, where are you in real life? I'm based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Nice. So, You're in Vancouver? Yep, yep. Cool. Um, so I'm sitting here with Chris, who you've been connected to on text, but you don't really know Chris. So I was just going to introduce the two of you. Chris is a New York City stand-up comedian. He has a, a disability as well called complicated syndactyly. Have you ever heard of that? Nice. <laughs> no, I've, um, is that where you have like no 
twins. Yeah, very good. <laughs> awesome. He got it in the first shot. I it's mean, great. you don't have no I, limbs. No, I'm just missing four arms. That's the only thing that I'm missing is four arms. Right. Is that your ride? I'm familiar with it. This is, I'm familiar <laughs> with this silly, but, but I, I've never heard the name before. Yeah, we did. It, I asked Chris. I was like, "What's it called?" He's like, "I don't know." I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. I, like I'm supposed to know. <laughs> yeah. No. He. We don't know. Um. But yeah, it's called complicated syndactyly, and Chris is actually um the first friend that I ever made at an open mic when I started comedy in New York. And uh, besides his lack of forearms, he also has a gorgeous face. Oh no. And <laughs> he does. No. And I. I reached out to Chris initially for this podcast because uh, he wrote a hilarious joke on Facebook when the whole Louis C.K. Uh, scandal broke that Louis was jacking off in front of women. Uh, and, <laughs> right. And so Chris wrote a joke. And Chris, do you want me to paraphrase or you want to say the... Uh, I'll never be able to reach uh, Louis C.K.'s joke writing ability or my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so yeah, and so knowing Chris, I like immediately was like, "Holy shit, I've never even thought about that." Like and and that happened before I had even had an orgasm, so I was like, "Oh, I feel like I've got such an issue, but you, I mean, you can't you have a show called Hand Jobs and can you give yourself a hand job?" Uh I think I can. Do you? <laughs> I mean, I also joked that punching down was how I masturbate. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that that I would not suggest doing that. That's very painful for your genitals. Don't punch uh, your dick. Yeah, or your clit. That yeah. that will hurt. Uh, no, I mean, hand jobs is like a different thing. It's not about sex. It's it's more about no. like me finding a job. No, definitely no. Han uh, to preface Spencer. <laughs> Chris has a, a show on YouTube called Hand Jobs where he tries different professions and, yeah, does them. Yeah. So rock climbing, lifeguarding, flying a helicopter, most things that you would think required hands. Yeah. I also was a boxer. Did you? Yeah. I boxed, I boxed with, like, the 27th, uh, uh, 27th ranked boxer in middleweight, I think. That's insane. Cordell Booker. Yeah. How did you get in touch with him? Well, what I did, uh, what start that was a, the way that I got the pilot was really awkward and funny. Um, I wanted to do nail salon, and I wanted to do like I was asking female comics, like, yeah. "Hey, do you know a nail salon that I can do your nails in for a joke and all that stuff?" And all the nail salons said no. What? And then I had a girlfriend at the time, and we, Mike Lavin and myself, we asked our girlfriends to go find nail salons, and they all. Both of them came back with, yeah, they're they're not going to let you in. And I think it was like that. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's like a fox in the hen house kind of ideology. Like, oh, some guy's going to come in mm -hmm. and do mm -hmm. all, you know. And uh, I hate when there are men that work at nail places and they're always the ones that like start giving you a massage while you're getting your nails done. They're like, do you want a massage? And you're like, not from you. Go away. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, to, that's annoying. It's I'm, really annoying, Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> I am trying to do masseuse though. That that is one of the list of things that I just want to check off on, like ready to do. But yeah, what ended up happening was like we couldn't find a thing to shoot for the pilot, so I just mass emailed everybody that I knew with weird jobs, mm -hmm. and I emailed Darren Williams, who is a comic here, and now he moved to L.A. and he was like, "Yeah, I could train you how to be a boxer, and then we'll put Cordell in there." And then I was like. Cordell Booker, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll, okay. I'll box him, and uh, it was pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Spencer, how did you get started um, with all of your writing stuff? Because I know a lot of people look to your articles for help if they have a disability and they're struggling sexually. Well, how it started, it was like um, I got approached by a... Um, sexual circusy company um, in Vancouver, in Vancouver um, called Sensual Solutions and um, they nominated me to take part in this Vice documentary about um, sex and disability and um, uh, sexual surrogacy so that's how I basically got 
Okay, the that's so cool. To write the column. What is sexual surrogacy? Is that does that mean another person? Is it like her? Have you seen her? So be, Wait. So basically, so basically, it's it's it, 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 um somebody that like um you like you know get to experience um being um intimate with and um they like help you prepare for your like actual like they prepare you to like go out in the world and and um know how to operate properly or okay okay wait 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 does this mean like is it one of those like nurses that helps like like people put their genitals together what yeah Uh, i've heard of this what is that hold on something like that but they don't really they don't really (laughs) refer to themselves as 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 nurses they some of them do have experience um with like um uh with, with being carried and like helping people with disabilities but um they're not specifically nurses Oh. Okay. Can you explain to uh, some of my fans who aren't familiar with cerebral palsy what the symptoms are and like uh, CP? Just like is when um, bleeding happens in the brain, and um, there's like certain parts of the body um, where um, uh, just. There's certain parts of the body where there's no signals being sent. So, in my case, um, I'm not able to walk. Um, I'm in a he's a motorized wheelchair, but yeah. I don't let that get, I don't let that get me down. Like I'm still active. I'm still like yeah, definitely. Were you not sexually active before this program approached you? Uh, well, yeah, I, I... It's I okay to say no. <laughs> I lost my virginity at 23. Okay. Nice. And how old are you now? I'm 26. Nice. 17, baby. I beat both of you. No, I was 16. Ah, <laughs> oh, you beat me? Yeah. That's not fair. Yeah, fucker. Girls always have it first. Yeah, well. God damn it. <laughs> um, but Spencer, so, and would you ever... Like, were you, were you masturbating before then? Oh, yeah. I, I I started masturbating when I was... I started masturbating when I was 12. Okay, nice. That's nice. pretty... That's a pretty normal so, like, standard boy age. I, I've all, Like, I've always been... I've always been a sexual person. always been a sexual person. But just been, like, um... Like, afraid of rejection. That's why I... That's why I, um... Uh haven't really um, dealt with like relationships that much before but I knew that by 23 it had to by 23 it had to happen I mean yeah I knew that I was getting old so I mean not old but <laughs> you know uh, you just weren't feeling just, included just, in something that everybody else is doing yeah yeah exactly I just I like in high school like you know, people were, like, experiencing dating and, like, sex, and I was like, okay, that's cool, guys. You do your you, you do your own thing. I wasn't ready. I was okay, you know. Mm. I was okay being, like, um, yeah. the virgin. I, um, you know, I had other things. I had other things going for me. But after I left high school, I was like, it's I was like, time. okay, okay. Time to grow some balls and be a man and just, like, fucking lose it. Um, <laughs> you have such a Canadian accent, by the way. Be a man. Um, be a man. Be a man. <laughs> um, wasn't there a movie about um, somebody in a wheelchair or ha- who had a disability who was being coached through sex that came out uh, a few what? years ago? What movie? I, 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 th- I think you're referring to a movie uh, with... Um, Helen Hunt and John Hawks called the sessions. Uh huh. Yes, 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 yes. I never saw it, but I heard it was amazing. It, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty fucking good. I, I I would I would um I would recommend it. Um, 
and it's actually based on a um, true story paper somebody wrote called "Seeking a Seeking a Sex Surrogate." Uh huh. Um, it's it's a pretty good um, it's a pretty good like uh, yeah. I I mean I liked it. That was my that was my introduction to um like. Um, like sex surrogacy and uh, you know sex and disability and I was like I was like hey if he could do that if he could do it I can do it too yeah definitely so, wait do you have rims on your wheelchair because I would I would rim the shit out of that would you yeah I would put uh, rims on that I, I thought about I thought about it but I was like I was like I I don't want people to um. I don't want to draw, like, I want to draw attention to me. I don't want to draw attention to my wheelchair. Yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> because I want people to get to know me for me um, and not just because, like, oh, he's in a wheelchair for him, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. I, mean, I, I definitely have that concern, but if I had a wheelchair, I would definitely write pussy wagon in the back and <laughs> put some fucking rims on it and neon lights, and yeah. I would not give I a mean, fuck. Like, sometimes my wheelchair, like I, re- <clears throat> like, I refer to it as my, in my column as uh, um, a, cock a block. cock block. Yep, I saw that. A it's cock gotten, block? It's gotten, it's gotten in the way of... Um, gotten in the way with like experiences with um with women and i just like because of that oh. i'm just like i just well i guess anybody would feel insecure after like you oh. know being uh being rejected but oh yeah i've been i've been rejected so many times dude but you know what would be great is like if it's like two o'clock in the morning and it's like last call and you have like this really hot chick You'd be like, yo, you need a ride? Just hop on my lap. Yeah, or like, you want to sit down? Your yeah. heels look really uncomfortable. Yeah, dude, right? You're missing golden sit opportunity for puss, dick. dude. <laughs> um, and go through cobblestone streets. Make her work. Seriously. <laughs> that would be, dude, that would be epic. Just by vibration alone. Like, do you know how many girls go downstairs and sit on the dryer while it's going? What? For Why? a tumble dry because oh. of the vibration and it's warm. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that wouldn't that give you a yeast infection though? What the, the fuck do you think a yeast infection is? I don't know. Oh my god, no! A yeast infection comes from like wearing a wet bathing suit for too long. Oh, essentially, yeah. Um, but so Spencer, can you tell me just a bit more? So the service was called what again? Sensual Solutions. Uh huh. And when um, and so you sought them out. Like, did you go on Google well, and you were like, "I need help fucking"? Oh my God! You just want to bang cripples. That's no. all. I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking, like, for people out there who have disabilities, how can they find something in their neighborhood that might help them out, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. Um, oh God. Yeah, I guess. I guess I sought out um, them to for a solution. Uh, to help me, like, have sex. Yeah. Um, but, like, as, as far as far as now, like, I don't want to, like, you know, they're, they're a great resource, and they're there whenever I need it, but I feel like I don't want to rely on them. No, um, you want to use it as, like, a jumping-off point. I, I want to just... Nice. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> No, she just said. Yeah. I said jumping off point. And yeah, then, and you're in a wheelchair. And you're in a wheelchair. <laughs> and I'm just like How, nice. <laughs> yeah, and Chris said nice because he has no soul <laughs> and no arms. But anyway, well, so <laughs> yeah. I will say though, Chris maneuvers a microphone better than ninety percent of the people on this podcast. Well, it's because I have a watch on. Yeah, you have a crook in your arm. Well, yeah, but also the watch is like my thumb. Okay, nice. So I use it as my thumb. Yeah. I know it's weird. No, it's not weird. It's no. Everybody always. Yeah, I know it's creepy, Remy. I didn't say it's creepy. I said it's great. You fucking (laughs) asshole. (laughs) We're gonna play back the tape for a second. Yeah. No, you have to remember. I have editing power over this, so I'm gonna come off great. You're gonna come off great. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm gonna look like the dick, and she's gonna be like, "I'm the innocent one." I just want to fuck cripples. (laughs) Um, That was great. Thanks. Okay, so (laughs) Spencer. 
how have you always been in the chair your entire life, or was it um? Yeah. Okay. I was uh, I was born. I couldn't walk since birth. I couldn't walk at birth either. That's so crazy. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, Remy. <laughs> but yes, okay. Um, you did you always have a good group of friends? Like, did people make you feel alienated in that way? You know, I've always had like good. I've always had like good friends. You know. Yeah. Um, a, a good like, a good support system. Um, and like you know. People that like are willing to like help me like um, you know do do the things that I want to do you know just you know just treat me like a normal dude yeah definitely um, yeah and I think that it's easier for friends than romantic interests because it's not really changing up how you approach the friendships. You can still go to the movies. You yeah. can still do all this shit. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think what's difficult in sex and like I come across this with like a lot of trans people or non-binary people is people asking about their junk um, because at the end of the day if you're trying to have sex with someone you're trying to have sex with their junk and I remember yeah. and it, nobody wants to ask that question A because it's rude um, but B because it, it's going to mm. make the other person uncomfortable and if they don't want, get the answer that they don't want to hear then you're going to shut down the sexual experience altogether. So, I mean, totally. I, I remember watching, there was a show on TLC. I don't remember, oh, fuck. It was um, this guy with a disability. He didn't have a lower half. Like, he didn't even have... How is that possible? Hip bones. I don't know. And he had the most gorgeous face, and he was married to this woman, and he'd walk around on his arms. But how would he poop or go to the, do number they, one? I mean, they, so they can't show you their genitals. But the entire time you're wondering, does this guy get boners? Like, can he shit? Like, he's all gotta have stuff. at least a penis in order well, to Well, he like... does. Apparently, he's got like a rocking dick. And nice. he fucks and he does, and he's super capable. But it's that initial thing of like, hey, what do you have and does it work and can it work with me? Yeah. yeah. When you lost your virginity, was it, was it with one of the people from that program or? Basically, um, they, don't prom they don't promote this, but. Um, like what happened with what happened with me is I just ended up, you know, having like full on penetrative sex, sex, and um, like you know, like I I like I like sex, but um, thing that sucks about me is like um, I just I just lie there like a. I just lie there like a human dildo and just like let them <laughs> just like go just like but let them go to town. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, but at the same time, what? I would hope you were using your hands. Smart. Let her do the work. <laughs> <laughs> That's apparently yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, move too. Is he just lays like a fish and lets girls fuck him? Well, that's Leo DiCaprio. Um, Leo DiCaprio can fuck whoever he wants. But that's what I'm saying. He's not even fucking them. They're fucking him. No. Uh, Isn't it? Um, oh, whatever. One of the one of the things one of the things that I like one of the things that I like I'm not having a good time during sex unless I know that like my partner is taken care of. So I recently discovered that I'm pretty good with my tongue. Woo! So, yeah. So so yeah I I. I'm not, um, I'm not happy unless, like, I'm able, unless, like, you know, unless, like, they're able to have an orgasm. You take pleasure in other people's pleasure. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, I, I, I could care less if I came, but, um, uh, what's really important to me is, is, is the, is the woman's pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Dude, that's like number one for me, and you know, I always like go down on a woman first before anything. How do you stay propped yeah, up? That's the, How do I stay propped that's up? Good way to do it, yeah. <laughs> it's what are you talking do about? Do you lay on your stomach? No, I lay the woman down. Yes. Like, on her back. Yes. On the edge of the bed. Yes. And then I edge of the bed. That's the yes. thing. And then you're kneeling, not laying. Yes. Okay, there but, you go. But if it's sixty nine, she's gonna be on top of me. Right. 
Right. Like, I'm heavy. No, I know. I was just picturing both of your full bodies on this bed. Like, <laughs> what? And you're like laying belly down. But I mean, now it could, makes more sense. But you could knees. do that. Yeah, but you could do that too. Yeah, but then you have to lift your head up. Okay. Because your neck is uncomfortable. I don't know. Okay. These are, yeah. I've I just done think it the knees are a better, sound like a better. Yeah, but I need a pillow for my knees because my knees are weak. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I have weak knees like a bitch. Which is, he's such a sweet little bitch. I love him. I know. Um, but yeah, dude, that's how you do it first. That's how you always have to do it. Just pleasure her first, make her comment, and it's like, yes. Yeah, but, yeah. That, you know, you know, that, and that's how, I, that's how I can get comfortable and, and, and have, and have a good time is to make sure that, you know, they're, to make sure that they're, uh, pleasured too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, I also, um, I, I watched The Theory of Everything um, about... Um, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, my, yeah. He's my hero. Is he? Oh, my God. Well, that, He had extramarital affairs. Oh, yeah. He had a wife. Dude, he's like the Mount Everest of, like, cripple. Okay, well, first of all, cheating is never great, but that guy <laughs> fucked. That guy fucked. So much. In a much. wheelchair <laughs> with, LA, uh, with uh, MS. Yeah, right. with with MS I know without cheating being is bad, Remy, able to speak. But Remy, yeah, I know. I know cheating is bad, but dude, like, if you had the same situation and he fucked as many, yeah, game recognizes game. Game recognizes <laughs> game, Remy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and I'm not a cheat. I've been cheated on mostly, but like mm. when I saw when I read what he did in like his extramarital affairs, I'm like, I I kind of like clapped a little bit. Like I clapped and I was like. Bravo. Literally, <laughs> I was just like, wow, he fucked so many women. Yeah, he fucked. He was like the Leo DiCaprio of Cripple. It's just like <laughs> so many, <clears throat> so many bitches just came throwing their panties at him. And I'm like, yes, there is hope for me. Um, and I mean, you both have, have young working dicks, so it's not like it's too difficult to get you off when it's your turn. And it actually takes me a while. Really? Exactly. It takes me a while to come. Oh no! But Spencer, yeah. Are you're you good. Well, let, let, let me let me explain let me explain something. I I, I recently found out that um, with like oral penetration, I could like I could come very easily. Uh huh. But Ooh. if if like if they're on top, like if they're on top, if they're on top for some reason, I can't. Um, yeah, it's not I you. Can't. A lot of guys I've spoken to don't like having a girl on top because then they're not in control of the motion. Mm, I I I'm kind of like right. I can't. Yeah. That's kind of true, but like, I mean, I'll give you an example. Like, I can't come with head at all. Okay. So it doesn't. That doesn't work for me at all. So like, you're the hard. exact opposites of each other. Yeah. Yeah. But like, with writing, it has to be like a specific motion. And then I can I can come, mm-hmm. or my favorite position is like, like, doggy style or like just, uh, or sideways. I found out. Yeah, sideways is the best. Sideways is awesome. It's very uh, low impact. It's low impact, but it's also like equal playing ground. And yeah, it's and nice. you can kiss too. Yeah, like look behind, and you have like little Spider Man, the Notebook movie what? moment. You know how it's, it's <laughs> what Spider? What are I'm, you I'm a Marvel fan? I'm combining Spider Man. I am a DC <laughs> fan. This is unprecedented. Did you not see Infinity War? I did. Okay. Well. And I laughed at every spot where everybody like where you Infinity know. Infinity War was great. It was. Uh, I just laughed when all the nerds started crying. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it was sad. I won't it, tell you guys what happened, but no, I I laughed at sad. every. Every time when the nerds started crying that this character like went, it was like, oh, and I laughed really, really hard. And they're like, why are you so mean? <laughs> you are mean. Um, I am. Spencer, DC or Marvel? Marvel, hands down. I would fuck the shit out of Gal Gadot. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, There's she's hot. There's no way. No, DC for me all the way. What? Right. Yeah, Wonder Woman I mean, is hot. I mean, I'm, I'm more of a Marvel fan, but I would... Totally fuck uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Okay. She also did like time in the army, so she knows how to kick ass. Yeah. Which is what I like in a woman. Yeah. You do? Like a strong... Yeah. Why not? I don't know. Some people don't. Really? Yes. They are intimidated. Losers. Yeah. Well, they're lost in my game. Yes, exactly. 
Um, so what is it about head that doesn't do it for you, you think? I don't know. I, I just, uh, I've, like, I've had several women do it, and it's just like, it turns me on, it gets me hard, but I can't, I can't do it. Do you it. think you're thinking too much during? I think I'm thinking too much, but I'm also like, I'm, in, I'm like enjoying it, but at the same time, I'm like thinking about like positions that I want to do, and then I get antsy about it. And okay. Like, I, for me, I think it's just because I'm antsy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like I really, like if I'm going down on a woman, I'm always like focused on making her come. But you don't get antsy in that time? No. It's just like... It's only after, like, like I really want to make her come and I want to know... Like, the first time I'm a little antsy because I'm like, am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? Am yeah. I hitting the right spot? Am I licking in the right area? Or, or like, it, it's like once I get to the motion of what makes her come, I'm like, oh, no, I, I know how to do this now. It's, Who was the first girl that you fucked? A high school sweetheart. That was oh, my girlfriend for a while. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. And how long had you been dating before the sex? Uh, a couple months. Nice. I don't remember. It's been a while. But, yeah, a couple months. So you never felt like you were, like, missing out on anything? No, because, like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's tough with me because, like, I've always asked girls out. I've always gone out and, like, hit on girls and been rejected and it's just it's a little easier for me to be like okay i got turned down not a big deal i i really envy people who had relationships that early on in life because i always feared that kind of rejection like sexual rejection that's not a thing for like a girl that developed early no it was like if i wanted to hook up with somebody i could but i was always like that emotional like nobody or it seemed to me that nobody ever wanted to just be mine and so that's always been an insecurity of I, of mine the opposite way. I start that way, right? Yeah. I start like wanting to go out and all that stuff. But if like the girl's like meh, I'm like meh. Like before I used to be a little like, I mean, I've had one night stands where I was like, hey, you know, and then she's like, why are you still here? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm like, okay. And then I, I've done walks the chain before, so it's not like the worst. I used to get upset over it, but then as I got older, I was like, you know what? If I hook up with a girl and she wants me to stay the next morning, that's fine. If not, pfft. Yeah. Spencer, do you, I mean, your walks of shame, I'm sure, are a little different. Um, <laughs> he has a ride, Remy. <laughs> God. Um, he doesn't have to walk. No. But do you. Jesus. Do you, <laughs> Does the the cock block of a chair like does that hinder you going back to other to girls' houses? Like, do you always have to invite them back to your place? Well, that that's part of it. But what I'm referring to when uh, when I say my chair is a gigantic cock block is um like some girls often like they they like me right, but they just don't want to deal with the fact that I have a disability. So like, so like I I just like. I can't date you because I don't want to deal with your disability. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, like it's that, too much of a strain. But, uh, and that, yeah. And that's a, that's a blow to my self-esteem. But No, dude, you're, you're fucking a girl. That shouldn't blow your self-esteem, dude. All right? You've won. Like every other guy at that bar <laughs> could have gotten with her, and she chose you. And, yeah, she doesn't want a relationship. Fuck it, dude. You got you got laid. Yeah, that's... That, that, that's a win for sure. It's that is a win. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> um, so Chris is doing an episode of Hand Jobs coming up soon, where you're going to train to be a stripper. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this will be. This I, will be. Uh, a, yeah. We can't wait to see that. Oh yeah, this will be. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to finalize it, but yeah, we're trying to get the. What do you think will be more difficult, pole work? Or the actual art of striptease? I don't know, Remy. I mean, the pole work alone is climbing and then <laughs> twirling and hopefully not landing on my head. Yeah. <laughs> so the pole work will definitely be hard, but try so to So will your dick. Yo, <laughs> nice. Remy landed yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> no, but like t I've never taken off a bra before. So especially my bra. You're going to strip as a woman. Yeah. Okay. This will be fun. Yeah. Oh my god, can you I can, can you? I can on another person. Cuz I've seen you untangle headphones. Like you can do a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I can do that, but, like, the bra thing, I don't know. I think the bra thing is difficult for every guy, just because it's not something that you're doing on a regular basis with practice. No, but I've done it before. Yeah. I mean, when I get tired, I'm just like, I'm lifting it up. Yeah. So I just lift it up like a regular piece of clothing. Nice. Are you going to tell me how you jack off? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> That's a weird segue. <laughs> like, I just lift up bras. You're going to tell me how you jack <laughs> off, which is why you brought me here. <laughs> That's why I brought you here. No, it honestly, like, I've been, no, I've been wanting to have Chris on for the longest time. And the second you wrote, like, I'll never reach my dick, I was like, wait, is that, does he not reach his dick? And then I was like, I got to talk to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I love how one joke led this whole journey. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. I literally, I mean, I can reach my dick as, like, but it would be, like, an otter trying to eat. Mm-hmm. So it'd be like, uh, you know. Too would, hunched. Yeah, I'd be hunched over really bad. Well, the first time you came, how did that come about? I masturbated and I came. There's so many ways to masturbate. Like, were you just face down and like rubbing back and forth on something? Or like, were you doing the hunch? I were was you a using kid. lotion? I don't know what I was. I know as a kid, I was just trying everything. And then I found a way to like. I mean, the first time I did it, I think I was face down and then tried to do different things, and then I managed to come. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, this is great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. (laughs) And then I just, you know, kept doing it, and I've been doing that ever since. Nice. But it is what it is. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Like, now, I, I don't know. Like, masturbating to me now is just like, I've been trying to, like, work it down. To like maybe two a day or like one a day, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not really into like masturbating now. Now I'm like going out and seeing if I can get. I mean, two a day and one a day is still. <laughs> it's a good amount of masturbating. Yeah, it's a good amount of masturbating. It makes me sound like a freak, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Not at all. Oh well. No, I really. Do. I think it's super healthy. Yeah. Um, Spencer, do you remember your first masturbatory experience or just the first time you jerked off <laughs> or the first time you came? Uh, Sometimes honest, it's in a dream. Honestly, honestly like, um, the first time I, the first time I came, I thought I pissed myself. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, uh, I just couldn't just, I was at that age where I, I couldn't decipher I couldn't decipher the two. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I mean, uh, I still. If I like, squirt, I think I pissed. You it squirt? Felt like, yeah. Holy all, crap! All, yeah. all I, all I know, all I know, it, it felt, it felt re- like it, it felt really good, and and I felt kind of, um, I felt kind of empowered. I'm like, I'm like, yes, I can, dr- I can. I can um, I can jerk off because I didn't like at that age like at that age like I didn't think it was possible. Yeah. Um. But and then and then all of a, and then all of a sudden I was like, yes, yeah, finally something that I can do on my own and I do not need assistance. Yep. Is there whatever. disability porn? Yeah, there's amputee porn. Is there? Yeah. And it, you ever watch it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really get... Just to, like, get some tricks? Get some tricks on amputee porn? Yeah. You know, they lube up the, the <laughs> limb and then they shove it up some... So I saw a oh. porn where a girl lubes up her limb and then shoves it up this guy's ass. Oh, my God. It's the most, like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's dead, dude. He's dead right now. <laughs> The, the girl was like, oh, my God, I killed him. Oh, my God. Um, Spencer, same question. Do you ever watch any wheelchair porn to get ideas? Wheelchair porn's hot. Uh, no. Uh, I, I'm more of a, like, I'm more of a lesbian porn kind of guy. All right. Lesbian porn, the classic. Yeah. I'm just, I have a, a specific sickness where I just have to picture people fucking. So, like, if I find out, like, a couple is dating, I'll picture them fucking. Like, really? You tell me that, like, yeah. you're in a wheelchair, yeah. I picture you fucking. Like, I've been picturing, like, the different ways girls are probably sitting while you're eating them out. I think their yeah. legs are on yeah. your shoulders while you are cupping their butt. Yes? They basically just, like, sit 
we basically just like, you know, just like inch up to my face and just like sit on my face, and I just like like hold their like hold their legs. So yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I don't hold anything. Yeah, I don't know. And, <laughs> you don't um, hold anything. No. <laughs> yeah, but you probably give really nice soft touches. Me? Yeah. Um. Uh, the way that I do it, if I'm going to go down on a girl, I usually, like, kiss her neck and then go down mm-hmm. and then play with her breasts and, well, suck on them and then go further down and then go there because that's easier and, and it gets the girl more excited. And then People are going to masturbate to this episode. Goddamn right they are. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn <laughs> fucking right they are. Um, and then I go to town. No, but I was just thinking, because, like, a lot of the times, go- girls like it when, like, guys rub, like, the head of their dick on your clit, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, your elbows are, like, so round and luscious, like a nice dickhead. Yeah, okay. Like, that would be amazing. Like, no, I'm seriously. This? Try that on a clit. This part. No, that wouldn't work. Why? Too rough? It would be this part. Okay. This part would do it. No, this part. See that that yeah, that's U good. shape? Yeah, that's good. When I go like that, yeah. that that'll do it. Or if I rub it another way, uh, sometimes I'll switch it up midway through. Like I'll I'll rub this way, mm-hmm. and then I will do this, and then that will. This is really helpful for people since this podcast is so yeah, visual. We're yeah, like, we'll do this, and then this part. <laughs> yeah. It will be the best. Listen, uh, if you want to know what he's talking about, just follow him and just ask fuck for me. a just date. Just fuck me. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> if you really want to know, just fuck me. Right. In. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I need to know. Like, I prefer a natural thing. I mm-hmm. don't know. But, like, certain women don't like it when I'm like, I like the bush. And they're like, what are you talking about? You like the bush. Like, I got yelled at. Like, what? Yeah. They don't. Apparently, like I like I like it natural. I don't like it like yeah, yeah, shaved yeah. or anything. But like two women that I've like slept with or gone out with, they're like uh, shaming you for liking Bush. Yeah, they they're just not a fan of it. Like my ex didn't like it. Like she kept it up for me, and then she was like, "I'm shaming it." Yeah, and I then, mean it gets itchy sometimes. I will say. I know, but I feel like most girl. I mean. You've come into contact with two specifically, but a lot of girls would be really happy for a guy to be like, listen, I like it natural. Be like, oh, my God, thank God. I don't have to see oh. Kiki once a month and rip out my my hairs. Oh, my God. So it was. <laughs> oh, my God. It wasn't crazy. I was the only one. That, everybody's been making fun of me for that. I'm like, oh, no, I just I really like I like it natural. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely more pheromones when it's natural because. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, Plus, it looks hotter. It definitely looks more adult, except for the other day I was saying I've been shaving my box for so long because we were always shamed into like if you had any hair, you were disgusting. No. So literally since puberty, I've I've shaved it bald or whatever. And then sometimes when I have hair now, I'm like, oh, my God, I feel prepubescent. Um, <laughs> I don't like, leave it. Like, <laughs> leave it. Leave it there. Uh, when a girl yeah, right. like, totally um, bald because it feels like I'm like feels like I'm fucking a 12-year-old, and I don't really want to feel that way. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, no, I I feel that. Although it's so nice when it's just smooth. Yeah. You feel like a little marble statue. Fucking Aphrodite. Um, Oh, yeah. Well, I've had just the best time talking to you guys. Yes. Uh, Yeah, me too. Do you want to hear something crazy, too? What? You guys separately texted me on the same day saying, this'll be the best, with the apostrophe, two L's, and everything. Yeah. This'll be the best. But it was both of you within the same five minutes, and I was like, holy shit, they're so synced up. Nice. Like, yeah. Yeah, purples are like we're, women. We just sync every once in a while. We're so in sync. <laughs> so in sync. Um, all right. Well, everybody, uh, please let my fans know where they can follow you. Spencer Williams, can you give your social and where to find your articles? Okay. So basically, uh, you can follow you can follow me on Instagram at DJ Spencer Music. You can follow me on Twitter at the same handle, uh, and um, can find my articles by googling. 
Perfect. Chris Crespo, same question. Uh, you can follow me on two different things on Twitter. Uh, my main page, my main Twitter page is at C-R-E-S-P-O-S-T-S. And then for the hand jobs series, you're just uh, at hand job series. That's so dangerous. I know. <laughs> I want it at hand jobs, but yeah, someone no, took it. No, you can't. And I was so mad. No, someone has it. Oh, really? And I'm mad because I really want it at hand jobs so bad. Is hand jobs anything sexual or it's just like a dude with a. I don't know. I didn't even check. You I should just... write him or her. To give up the time? Yeah. Really? Yeah. My friend bought his wife, uh, like, somebody else's name when she had to change her last name. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's weird. Why yeah. would you buy? I, I already have I don't know. I, he paid somebody 50 bucks who was, who, like, had the same Instagram handle that she wanted. Oh, I have. Uh, it's at Handjob Series now. It's fine. All right. Yeah. No, that's great. And, um, uh, I just have to ask this at the end of every episode and at the end of every sexual encounter to be a courteous host. Spencer, did you finish? Oh, yeah, totally. In a major way? Like, yeah, I mean. Like a, like a fountain. Uh, perfect. Nice. Like a geyser. Um, Chris, did you finish? Finished. Uh, yeah, I always finish in a woman. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. LOL. Nice. <laughs> and we will see you next time on How Come. Yay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know when you go all the way from A right down to O. Oh no. I think that I still got a ways to go. Oh, oh. I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves I'm rolling up my sleeves Oh baby I believe these guests can help Cause I can't do it by myself I wanna just